Sometimes I grow weary of the days with all their fits and starts. I want to climb some old gray mountain, slowly taking the rest of my life to do it, resting often, sleeping under the pines or above them on the unclothed rocks. I want to see how many stars are still in the sky that we have smothered for years now, forgiving it all and peaceful, knowing the last thing there is to know. All that urgency, not what the earth is about. How silent the trees, their poetry being of themselves only. I want to take slow steps and think appropriate thoughts. In 10,000 years, maybe, a piece of the mountain will fall. Few things in life can teach us about slowing down and remaining steadfast and faithful quite like a mountain. And yes, like I suggested last week, I felt it was only right to bring it home this Sunday with a third Mary Oliver poem in this Caring for Creation series. Like the mountains themselves, these words of the poem, The Poet Dreams of the Mountain, seem to draw us out of the frantic pace of life and into the peace of a mountainous dream. In both this poem and the lessons we hear today, we are called to slow down out of the urgency of life that is all around us and is so inherently self-centered and seek God's wisdom that endures and finds its home in the mountains. All that urgency, not what the earth is about. I've often told folks that I am more than happy to visit the city I always enjoy vacationing at the beach, but the only place I ever want to call home is here in the mountains. There's just something about the mountains that brings peace and comfort. I think I first became aware of this phenomenon when I was in college. I came to school in Harrisonburg and to my deep delight was still surrounded by my beloved mountains. But this valley here is wide. And it wasn't until one of the first times that I came home home to Roanoke that I realized the Roanoke Valley is much closer. The mountains seem to embrace you there, like creation rising up to hold you close. That says nothing to diminish the Shenandoah Valley, but that moment made me realize that I never want to leave the embrace of the mountains. There is something ancient and wondrous to be found here. Like these peaks and valleys hold deep wisdom and speak some kind of truth through their silent vigil. Now, I love the Rockies and I especially love the Alps because standing on those soaring mountain peaks, it makes you feel like you can rise to reach the heavens and yet you know you remain planted on a firm foundation. There's nothing else quite like it. But these Appalachian mountains that we call home here are different. There's an ancient warmth and wisdom that is born in the witness of these hills, mountains that were once taller than the Alps, but hundreds of millions of years have taken their toll. The mountains around us, according to geologists, don't hold many fossils, even though the limestone would be a good place to find them. That's because not only are these mountains that were once the central Pangaea mountain range older than the Atlantic Ocean itself formed before the continents separated, but these mountains even predate life evolving from the oceans to live on dry land. That means these mountains are older than the existence of bones. These mountains have stood for hundreds of millions of years as silent sentinels watching God's creation play out in its own unassuming time. All that urgency, not what the war earth is about. So take a day, go sit up on Skyline Drive or on the Blue Ridge Parkway and feel the gentle wisdom that's all around you. Join the patient witness of God's good creation as it sings songs through the breeze and the birds. There's a holiness in these mountains as they call us to slow down and step out of the frantic pace of life 
and breathe in the ancient wisdom of God, our creator. These mountains seem to resonate with the vision that we hear in Isaiah today. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. In this vision of Isaiah, the mountain of the Lord is the place where we learn and grow, where we lean deeper into the ancient mystery of God's redemptive love that wove all of creation together and will weave us together again where we have frayed. As we gather on God's holy mountain, as we immerse ourselves in the wisdom and love of God that weathers the storms and changes of time, we see radical transformation. It says on this mountain, he shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. This is a vision of hope and peace and reconciliation. This holy mountain that we hear of again and again through the scriptures is the wisdom of our creator God made manifest through a community built on equity and peace. Once again in the gospels, Jesus takes to the mountain to impart God's steadfast wisdom. The famous Sermon on the Mount begins with God's brand of wisdom, not human logic. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit, the mourning, the meek, the hungry and the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, the oppressed. Human logic says that these blessings don't belong, that blessings don't belong to these. But God's wisdom says that love endures and God's own heart that is heaven set on new life and new creation resides with these, the weary, and the broken are called first to the mountain of wisdom to receive the gift and hopes of God. There is wisdom on God's mountain. We cannot receive and give this wisdom if we are still so bound to the frantic pace of life. Mary Oliver says, I want to climb some old gray mountain, slowly taking the rest of my life to do it, resting often. And I'm with her. There is wisdom to be found in this slow mountain journey. Life is so fraught with the breakneck pace of self-interest and knowledge for the sake of personal betterment. As Christians, we are not called to this. We're meant to seek wisdom, not trivia. Trivia is knowing that the Appalachians are older than bones. Wisdom is recognizing your beloved place and connection in the midst of all the Appalachian history that preceded you and the deep call to care for and restore God's creation that will outlive you. Wisdom connects us to God and to one another. Trivia is knowing that Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew and the Sermon on the Plain in Luke, but in Luke he included woes with his blessings so as to embody the plane of equity in his message. Wisdom is building our lives and our communities around the needs of those whom God has called blessed building up and restoring our community where it is hurting, and building community around the call to humility and repentance for those who have received woes. There is wisdom in these mountains, and this wisdom connects us to God and to one another, so long as we slow down and hear it. God has established wisdom on God's holy mountain. Maybe that mountain will weather and change over the generations, but the foundation, the life, the sense of home and community and peace that God's holy mountain brings will endure forever. Our call as Christians is not about personal salvation or our own individual faith. Our call is rooted in wisdom that draws all people together to witness to our equal belovedness in God's eyes and the truth of our salvation which is bound to one another. Selfishness calls us to save ourselves while wisdom binds us to the land and people all around us in an inescapable web of destiny. As we prayerfully go forward from this series on care of creation, I pray that we've heard that message above all, that message of connection and shared destiny, that message of community and the understanding that our actions affect others deeply. We can either choose to join God in acting for good sharing grace, working for the redemption of our environment and its people, or we can continue on the breakneck and lonely journey of self-interest, 
turned inward to only contemplate our own needs and desires with little care for anyone outside our small circles of interest. I once again want to invite you to spend some time in the mountains this week. Slow down. Embrace these peaks and valleys as they embrace you and listen to the wisdom spoken here. <laughs> the wisdom that has weathered the full history of life and creation, that speaks of our connection and the need to care for and preserve what we've been given. This wisdom will tell us of a new way where war is no more and peace is the birthright of all. If we can learn anything from the mountains, we can learn this. God's wisdom will endure forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>